Hey everybody, it's Chris, back with another review for the Blue Collar Beer Gourmet. Sorry about that, I'm going to make things, yeah, I think it should sound, it should be better now. Um, today I'm going to be reviewing one of those Eastern European beers that I had previously mentioned. This is the Baltica Brew Collect, Baltica, I believe is how you pronounce it, uh, Brew Collection Russian Imperial Stout. This is a 14.88 fluid ounce bottle, and the ABV on this is 10.0. Uh, the production date was July of 15, and it's best before July of 16. So this is uh, this is actually today's the 29th. This is the 17th. It's 12 days past its prime, but it is a 10% ABV. So I don't worry so much about that um, when the ABV is high, and uh, plus it's not that far off from the uh, the time. This was not a bargain, gang. Uh, picked this up at the Eastern European market across the street from me that I had mentioned before for $3.69. So, yeah, this is one of those times when the Blue Collar Beer Gourmet had to spend a couple of bucks. But as I'll tell you in book one, which uh, hopefully I'll have available soon, are, um, sometimes you're going to have to spend some money for the hobby. So, anyway, I've had uh, Baltica's uh, number nine lager, I think it is. Um, and it was it was all right. Uh, I'm in, really, really interested in trying this one out because it is, in fact, a Russian Imperial Stout from a Russian brewery. Uh, this brewery is in St. Petersburg. I spoke to a guy on Instagram last night in Moscow. He says you can't get this in Russia. So um, that just gives you some idea of uh, the availability of Russian Imperial Stouts for, in Russia. Uh, but because uh, when I, I first I told him I was going to be trying this out, his his response was Russian Imperial Stout. It almost made it sound like he'd never even heard of such a thing. So uh, I don't know. You know, it's uh, it's difficult to say. But um, on a four, let's see, I'm sorry, a five point scale, they've given the color all five points, bitterness all five points, and sweetness only one point. So. As a uh, imperial stout, you know the the real mark of an imperial stout is is the lack of alcohol burn. If you can make it smooth enough that you don't taste that or feel it in the back of your throat, you've accomplished something. But I'm just going to spin this around, show you what the back of it looks like. I got to say, the Russians hands down have got us beat in terms of. I mean, look at how much information there is: a sweetness, bitterness, color scale. Uh, I've got production date, best before date, alcohol by volume. Uh, I mean, this is, I've got, even got the, the brewmaster's name. His name is Yuri uh, Katunin. Okay, so I, I, if I ever make it to St. Petersburg, I know to go look up Yuri if I dig this. So, uh, anyway, enough talk. Let's get this show on the road. I went to um, Beer Advocate to see what sort of glassware I should be using. Found out you can use a snifter for... Uh, uh, a Russian Imperial Stout. As you can see, this is a little too wide to be a snifter. This is a goblet, but, you know, goblet snifter. I'm not going to split hairs on that one. I figure you always got to try and get as close as you possibly can. So the only other... Uh, uh, oops. Well, there it went. Sorry, gang. Can't show you this uh, bottle cap. Went over the side of the wall. But uh, anyway... Um, Always try to get as close to the glass as you can. The only other glass that I recommended for a Russian Imperial Stout was um, a pint glass. And let's face it, pint glass is the go-to glass. I mean, yes, if you don't have the proper glass, put it in a pint glass by all means. But if you've got a proper glass or something very close, now that is one dark stout. I have definitely given that the proper number on the five-point scale by giving it all five. Put that up closer. I'm not seeing a whole lot of carbonation, which I shouldn't for an Imperial Stout. <sighs> Getting a heavy molasses smell. And brown sugar. Um, it's funny, they only gave it a, a one, point, 1 point out of 5 uh, on the sweetness scale. But um, at least on the bouquet, there's a lot of sweetness. This is like molasses and, and raisins. and uh, there's, there's a lot of... A lot of complex smells in this so huh this is 14.88 ounces and it fits in my goblet i did not know that so yeah that's uh i i, I gotta maintain the molasses raisins and brown sugar smells so um let's try this out a russian imperial stout from russia 
uh, what is it? Do they say uh, Slovia? I believe is correct. So let's give this a shot. That's a pretty smooth Russian Imperial Stout. Uh, it has a very mellow flavor. Um, and you know what? I think this, as the story goes, Catherine the Great was so impressed with stouts, but she wanted something with a higher ABV when she toured the uh, United Kingdom. And so uh, somebody, some brewer, uh, to honor her, made her the Russian Imperial Stout. And that's how the Russian Imperial Stout got its name. So it's basically an Irish stout that has been made uh, imperial, imperialized, and given the title of Russian to uh, honor the Tsarina. Uh, this is this is actually what I would exp this is this is kind of on the money here, gang. Because um, it really tastes like an imperialized Irish stout, uh, despite all that. Um, Despite all, all the uh, sweet smells, uh, it's not particularly sweet in flavor. Not particularly bitter in, in either, though. I mean, it says uh, bitterness. It gives it a total of five. Um, I know that Russian palates, I, don't, I know they don't, they don't eat a lot of bitter. So maybe to a Russian, that's more bitter than uh, an American audience. Or maybe I'm just too much of an IPA fan. And I'm not noticing how bitter it really is. But um, this is a good beer. This is going to get uh, probably a 4.25, maybe even a 4.5 on untapped. Um, and I think my goblet was just the right thing for this. It produces good flavor. You can see the head is remaining pretty persistent on that, and the head is a very light khaki. It's not a dark color at all. The beer itself, however, you cannot see through. Absolutely no seeing through that beer and very little carbonation. So I'm going to sit back. I'm going to enjoy that. It's a 10-point ABV, and uh, here in Vegas, it's kind of starting to cloud over. It, I don't think it's going to rain, but in the event that it does, I just wanted to get this review done. Uh, you know, this is one of those birthday reviews. Tomorrow, the fat man turns 44, so uh, <laughs> thanks, honey. That was my girl, Nancy, backing me up. And uh, anyway, I see that I've gone on for seven and a half minutes now, um, but... Uh, if, uh, if you come across this, the, the Baltica Brew Collection from Baltica Brewery out of St. Petersburg, the Russian Imperial Stout, this is a good one. I'm going to recommend this to my buddy Guy Medley. Um, Guy, next time you're up here, you need to check out uh, Max's Eastern European Market on Sahara, uh, just east of, of uh, Durango. And uh, anyway, they're over there by Mr. Bills and Capriati's. So anybody else, too, whether you're Guy or somebody else out there who's in Vegas and wants to check out some uh, Eastern European brews, three sixty nine dollars for this. Not a bargain, i got to say. But for imports, it's you're, it's difficult to get a bargain on imports, especially from a small grocer. That's the other thing, too, is you got to understand that, you know, the, uh, the big guys can buy in higher volume, get better prices. So, and I always prefer to uh, help a smaller, more independent uh, grocer over one of the big guys. I'm just watching the kitty run off. Um, but uh, anyway, Max's European Market, I didn't I, forget, I didn't get the lady's name, uh, but she is the one who orders the beer. She talked to me about beer, so expect, uh, I don't know if it's going to be necessarily a whole series, but expect to see more Eastern European beers. Uh, while I was there, I picked up this one, and the next one you'll be seeing from that market uh, is a beer from Lebanon. So yeah, nowhere near Eastern Europe, but um, they have uh, Greek and and uh, Lebanese beer there as well, as well as some Macedonian. So I figure, you know, when I have a couple of, couple more bucks to put into the beer budget, I'm going to go over and grab a couple bottles at a time, and we'll just see how this goes in terms of um, trying out Adriatic and, uh, and uh, Eastern European uh, beers. Until then, um, drink good beer. Don't break the bank doing it. Cheers.